Hi students, this is Ms. Kiros. Today we're going to be working on a really important reading skill, determining multiple central ideas from a longer passage. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need to know this skill? Well, when you go to high school and college and even in your job, you're going to be reading through lots and lots of information, and it'll be really helpful if you can read through all that information and pick out what's most important. So let's get started. Have you ever wondered where your hamburgers come from? Well, today you're going to find out because we're going to read a passage called The Pioneers from Chew on This by Eric Schlosser and Charles Wilson. As we read, we're going to determine the central ideas in this passage and learn all about hamburgers. The story of fast food begins in October 1885 near the small town of Seymour, Wisconsin. A friendly and outgoing 15-year-old boy named Charlie Negreen was driving his family's ox cart down a dirt road amid wide open fields. Charlie was going to Atagamis County's first annual fair, where he wanted to earn some extra money selling meatballs. What happened next was the unlikely origin of a delicious sandwich that would one day change the world. As Charlie sold meatballs at the fair, he noticed that customers had trouble eating them and strolling at the same time. People were impatient. They wanted to visit Mr. John Bull's popular beehives, encased in glass, to see the fancy new harvesting machines, and to enjoy all the other thrilling attractions at the fair. They didn't want to waste time eating meatballs. Charlie suddenly had an idea. If he squashed the meatballs and put them between two slices of bread, people could walk and eat. And so Charlie invented the hamburger. German immigrants lived in Charlie's hometown of Hortonville, Wisconsin and he later claimed that the new sandwich was named after the German town of Hamburg, long famous for its ground beef steaks. Charlie continued selling burgers at the Atagami County Fair until 1951. A number of other cities, including New Haven, Connecticut, Akron, Ohio, and Hamburg, New York, now claim to be the true birthplace of America's favorite sandwich. But the residents of Seymour, Wisconsin will have none of that. The signs that welcome people into Seymour let everybody know they're entering the home of the hamburger. And every August, the town has a big parade in honor of Hamburger Charlie. Wow, we just read a lot of information. Now we need to figure out what are the central ideas in this whole passage. A great reading strategy is after you've read through a passage once all the way through, to go back and specifically look for important information in each paragraph. I'm going to be looking for important ideas in each paragraph that are also repeated throughout the passage. If we start in the introduction paragraph, I remember that this paragraph is really giving me some background information about Charlie Negreen, and he's very important. His name comes up quite a bit in this whole passage. It also tells me that he's from Seymour, Wisconsin, and that's also an important idea that's repeated later on in this passage, so I've underlined both of those things. The end of this paragraph also gives me a hint about Charlie's involvement with the origin of a delicious sandwich, which we know from reading this passage is the hamburger. In the second paragraph, we really find out how Charlie invented the hamburger by solving this problem of letting people eat something and walk around at the same time. And he did that by reinventing what to do with a meatball. This paragraph also lets us know where the word hamburger really came from, that he named his invention after a town in Germany known for its meat. So I've picked out those important ideas in this paragraph because it's really what the author wants us to know and their ideas that are appearing over and over again in this passage. In the last paragraph, we learn again about why Seymour, Wisconsin is important, because that's truly where the hamburger comes from, not all these other cities that maybe other people claim the hamburger is from. So I've underlined that important part as well. Here is a summary of the central ideas we picked out for this article. After reading through the article twice, we chose these ideas because they were repeated throughout the whole passage and these ideas represent what the author is mostly talking about in this article. Here are some examples of things that are not central ideas in this article. These ideas are not central ideas because they're really not important to the whole article and they're really not talked about throughout the whole passage. This article is not trying to tell us about Charlie Negreen in an ox cart, 
It's not trying to tell us about how I love hamburgers, and it's definitely not all about beehives at the fair. So remember, to determine the central ideas of a long passage, you want to first read the passage twice, once all the way through, and the second time looking back and asking yourself what is the most important information I need to know. You can also look for ideas that are repeated throughout the passage because that's a clue that that idea is really important. You also do not want to focus on the small, unimportant details. Those might give you more information about the big central ideas, but they're not the main idea of the whole passage. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to go get a hamburger. You have fun reading in class.